Welcome to Eureka. I am Gohar Raza and you are watching a program where we introduce one of the country's eminent scientist who has excelled in his own area of work. India is a country which is predominantly agrarian. It's a country which lives in villages. Villages, there are hardly any facilities for good education and excellence. Yet, the past 60 years show that some of the most eminent and excellent scientists have come from these villages. Poor working conditions, poor living conditions, hardly any education, yet there are Indians that are born there and are determined to achieve excellence. Today we have with us Dr. Vinod Kumar Singh. Dr. Sir, we are honored to have you on our show. You have excelled. You've got all the awards that anybody could aspire for. How did your journey begin? Well, uh, if I start from the beginning, I grew up in a village near Nizamabad in Azamgarh district. It's a very small, sleepy village, which is predominantly agrarian. And your family was a family of farmers. And in my village, nobody could speak English. We used to go to primary school with the bora, sack, sit on a garden. There was no chair. And Panditji used to teach us. How many teachers were there? There were three, four teachers. And uh, the first Panditji will come and, you know, he will have a stick, hit it, and then he start teaching. And that's the way uh, it was there. We How many times you were beaten, beaten up? Well, not really. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like uh, this a tradition, you know. The tradition was yeah, like right, that. Right. And I remember, I tell you, after my schooling in a village, I went to Nizamabad for, you know, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Then, you know, ninth, 10th, I was shifting. No, in the village, how many, how many students were there? Oh, there were close to 300 students. To and, th and three teachers? teachers? Yeah, four, four to five teachers maximum. But, you know, the total strength is supposed 300, but the attendance may not be 100%. Right. And uh, it was, you, you cannot believe, till BSc, I had never seen toothpaste. I saw toothpaste only when I joined BHU, a master's program. So that reflects how, how poor the country was, or I cannot talk about is, because, you know. Development has taken uh, place and a lot of things have reached exactly. even the villages. But during those olden days, Exactly. These villages were cut off from the humanity. Yeah, and information was not there. My ambition was, I, was com I come from, uh, uh, I will not say poor family, but definitely not affluent family. Uh, my ambition was that I will get some job after MSc and do that. But Guru Bhagat Singh, they, you, you know, he taught us in BHU. And I tell you, a great man. He also was Vice Chancellor of Delhi University and University of Hyderabad. I have heard him speaking, yes. I was inspired from his teaching and I decided to do PhD. And he recommended few people, few people like Dr. Sukhdev with whom I did PhD, Professor Govardhan Mehta and some others. I went to post office, bought one Antardeshi inland letter, wrote a letter and I got reply from Dr. Sukhdev if you get CSIR scholarship. So you, you got all the encouragement from your family during this period. Because yes. without that kind of support, it's very difficult for, some, for somebody who comes from a village to... to exactly. Uh, My father, his, aim, his only aim was that I should be educated. And he did to his best ability. Whatever was he educated, educated himself? No, not really. He may have passed, I don't know, maybe fifth grade or third grade, I don't know. He was a farmer. But he always wanted me to go. But the love for knowledge, yes. love for education, yes. and 
better future yes. for the younger generation was his aim. Yes. And he was very sensitive about it. Very sensitive about it. If anybody comes to my house and he speaks English, he will call me and ask me to talk to him and things like that so that I learned something from that person. I still remember. Uh, he is no more, but I still feel that whatever I am because of my father. And then the transformation took place when I joined PhD program. Dr. Sukhdev, a man, I have yet to see a scientist like him. Highly patriotic, devoted, and I, one thing I learned in addition to learning science, chemistry, love your country. Be punctual. But loving your country could uh, be could mean many things to many people. Yes. Loving your country could also mean that excel in science. Yes. Loving your country could also mean that have a good education system. Yes. Loving your country could mean many things. Yes. What did it mean to you at that time? That time it meant that whatever field I am in, Whatever I am doing, I should do the best job. That in turn, basically, good for the country, that means you love your country. What you said exactly, I believe in. And I tell you, I, I work hard. I was a highly obedient student, and he always liked me. And I was able to go to Harvard from there as postdoctoral fellow, work with the Nobel laureate. That transformed the whole thing. I learned organic chemistry only at Harvard, what kind of problem one should take. And then, of course, I had a very good job in US, paid very heavily. But when I got offer from IIT Kanpur with the basic of 1,320, I quit. But would you like to say, before that, would you like to say that it is the teachers who shaped you? Exactly. Who shaped you as a scientist exactly. and who shaped you as a citizen of the country. Exactly. That actually inspired me to get into research. I listened to Professor Govardhan Mehta's talk when I was a PhD student. I was so inspired, the way he gave a lecture. I listened to so many people's talk. I like to read history about people, great people. And I get inspiration from that. And my own advisor, E.J. Kore, who is a Nobel laureate, he works seven days a week. And I tell you today that I work seven days a week, even today I'm a director of an institute. That is how you were shaped by exactly. your teachers uh -huh. and with, with yeah. those whom you interacted. Yes. Um, I'll have to take a break. We'll continue this fascinating discussion. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back. Welcome back to Eureka. We are talking to one of the most eminent scientists of the country, Dr. Vinod Kumar Singh. Dr. Vinod Kumar, you were telling about your early education and how teachers shaped your life. When did you get interested into chemistry? My actually interest And why did you get? Well, uh, it's see, a difficult subject. It's, it's a difficult subject because I did BSc from Azamgarh from a college and uh, I, I liked chemistry. Not that much, but I applied to BHU for my master's program and I got admission in chemistry and that's where I got into chemistry. But there when I joined master program, the teaching of people like Professor Gurbhakar Singh inspired me. That is how you continued and you exactly. decided to work yes. in the area of chemistry. Mm -hmm. When did you decide that you will be working on very difficult problems within the chemistry. And what was the purpose? Uh, yeah. Did you have a meta question in mind? Did you want to crack a problem? What was it that yes, excited you? Yes, when I joined Harvard, uh, normally most of the postdocs used to take courses taught by those professors. And the area currently, these days I work asymmetric synthesis, chiral molecules. It's a very difficult area. It's related to stereochemistry. Most of the students, even today, run away from stereochemistry. Absolutely. Uh, I ran away from chemistry itself. <laughs> and there I decided that I had never seen a chemical model in India. I was able to see only there. 
and then I decided at Harvard. Harvard, and I decided that I will work. I'll do my research only in this area, and educate more and more students. And frankly speaking, but that was, what was the problem you were looking for? See, the problem uh, I, it's not any individual problem. The problem I tell you, the area I work in is is developing methods for synthesis of enantiomers. And enantiomer is nothing but a mirror image isomer. Correct. Mirror image isomer means suppose you have this hand and right. you put in front of a mirror, and then both then you'll get the other hand. Other hand, and these two are different molecules, different right. entity. But and they the look like mirror image of each other. Exactly, they look alike, but they have different properties. And if 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 you look at the history, there's a drug called thalidomide. It was discovered in sixties. And it was uh, actually launched in Europe. And kids born were deformed. What happened? Thalidomide had one kind of center. So it's a mirror, Im uh, mirror image isomer actually had a different property. So one isomer, one compound was doing its job, but the other I isomer was teratogen. That okay. was giving a side effect. So kids born were deformed. Since then, most of the drug regulatory agencies decided that if any company is going to make a drug, then they have to make sure that they have to synthesize both the enantiomers, show that they are, uns they are safe, then only the drug can be brought to the market. And so one has to develop a method to synthesize those enantiomers, and that is the area I work in today. Today. But uh, when you join uh, IIT Kanpur after coming back, which was a must have been a very difficult decision because you were working yes. in with with um, a, a very heavy pay package there, but you came back here. When you started working at IIT Kanpur, did you find similar kind of culture, uh, scientific culture, and research culture, or? Was it difficult to adjust? Well, ambience was there in IIT Kanpur, especially in chemistry department. It's a great department. I consider one of the few best department in the country. But research facilities were very, very poor. And you had seen the best of the research exactly. facilities and at my, Harvard. My student used to go to CDRI in a bus to run one NMR sample. Now you can imagine how difficult... And CDRI is in Lucknow. Lucknow. So from Kanpur yes. to Lucknow. It's almost 100 kilometer. Yeah. And CDRI was very well equipped research-wise. But IIT Kanpur Which was Which is part of CSIR. CSIR labs. And I, IIT Kanpur was very poor in terms of research facilities. So it was a difficult time. But one thing I, one thing I learned from my PhD advisor, who is a Nobel laureate, E.J. Kore, that if you work on a problem, always take a challenging problem. Don't run away from a challenging problem. Just because you cannot do it, you want to take a safe you know, uh, problem, that is not correct thing to do. And I took a difficult problem and that is why I was able to achieve whatever I have achieved till today. When did you shift your interest from doing first rate chemistry? to uh, education because now you are heading an institute and you are founder director of Indian Institute of uh, Education and Research, uh, especially focused on science education. When did you shift your... Interest? See, in the beginning I was only, a only dedicated a to science. science. I come by my cycle, come to my office, go from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock night, seven days a week for first 10 years. That was my job. I was highly frustrated that IIT Kanpur doesn't have good facility. Then I always had this kind of desire to establish, set up a new institute where state-of-the-art research facility is there. When I got opportunity in 2008, of course, it was very late. When I was offered this directorship, I readily accepted it. And today, if you come to ISAR Bhopal, you will see very good research facility. The facility which not many people can get Most it of. even in our country, yes. Now, these facilities are being used for doing first-rate research, but also focused on 
science education and research. Yes. So you are also responsible for the science education in the country at one level, both as uh, part of the SAC and as a director of this institute. Yes. See, I, I always like teaching. So, in fact, I learned most of my chemistry through teaching while teaching. And teachers. I, as a teacher while teachers teaching. And bright, teachers. Yes, <laughs> bright students at IIT Kanpur. Uh, Bhopal, of course, we have the same setup what we had in IIT Kanpur, what we have in IIT Kanpur. So, education, of course, is the integral part of the whole thing. Science education actually, for example, you take US universities, people teach and do research. So, education and research both are going hand yeah. together. Uh, and that is what we are doing in IIT, that's what we are doing in ISER Bhopal and other ISERs. We will come back to that. We have to take a break, don't go anywhere, we will come back. Welcome back to Eureka. We are discussing with Dr. V. K. Singh how education is very well integrated with research. Without one, the other is not possible. If you excel in education, you also excel probably in uh, research. But one of the roles of a researcher is to disseminate science, not only among the community of scientists, but also to the younger generation, which is the role that you have been fulfilling. But you are also responsible as a member of the Research Advisory Council, Science Advisory Council of the nation to decide what kind of science should be done. This long duration of five years, what has been your experience? It had been a wonderful experience, especially I was one of the few young people in the council. Uh, the committee headed by Professor C. N. R. Rao and uh, in fact various schemes were launched. Lot of new things happened in the last five years. I learned a lot actually while being in the council, frankly speaking. Uh, what were the best schemes? Would you like to elaborate upon that? Actually, I, I cannot say any particular scheme. For example, uh, uh, if you look at various, uh, you know, like uh, schemes in DST, DBT, they have come. And uh, other schemes also related to science and, you know, and education. All these new ISERs had come through only SAC PM. Several new research labs have come only through that program. At one level, the decisions that were taken in SAC uh, Prime Minister, the new institutions have come. At another level, a number of new schemes for the younger generation sure. and also women have been. Do you see an impact of these uh, schemes during these five years? Actually, uh, to, re to see impact, one has to wait for some time. Of course, we do see impact, large number of people from abroad. One of the achievement is ISER itself. ISER in a series itself, of yes. And ISERs. also people from outside, they are returning to India. And several new IITs have come. In fact, the scheme to f focus that we, India must have a supercomputer. And the Prime Minister announced also. So that is also because of SAC 2 PM. I should have congratulated you right in the beginning that you became Padma Shri uh, this year, which is one of the honors that anybody can aspire in the country. Thank you. But the journey began from uh, probably uh, Bhatnagar Award, yes. if I am right. Yes. Uh, I am sure you must have got many more um, awards before that as well. Which one excited you most? Was it Bhatnagar Award? or Padmashir? Actually, the, before that, I got Swarna Jayanti Fellowship Award in 1998. And the function took place in the Prime Minister's house. Atal Bihari Bajpayee Ji was the Prime Minister that time. And it was given to people who were below 40 years, who, you know, and, and it was created because of India's 50 years of independence. Since that time, I was relatively young and working very hard. That was the biggest pleasure I had receiving the Swan Jayanti Fellowship Award from the then Prime Minister. And of course, the Bhatnagar Award, definitely the highest honor in science and engineering. You have received very high civilian awards. 
like Swarn Jayanti Award or uh, Padma Shri Award. But the biggest award that a scientist can aspire for probably and is given by the scientific community in honor of your contribution to a, the area of science is Bhatnagar Award in the country. Did it excite you? Definitely. I was really thrilled. And I got uh, really uh, very excited that I have to do more and more. And in fact, that award I got in 2004, after 2004, I discovered a catalyst. Mm -hmm. And the catalyst is a chiral organocatalyst, which is considered one of the few best catalysts people are using abroad. And professors in Germany, they have named it as a sink catalyst. Sink catalyst, yes. after your name. Yes. Okay. So that reflects that after getting the award, I did not slow down. I contributed much more to science uh, uh, than I did before. S see, scientists never work for money or award. That is generally sure. said. But awards do excite them. Money may not. Uh, did you ever think of going to industry where you can get a much bigger pay package? In fact, to tell you the truth, after Swarnajanti Fellowship, I got a call from industrialists to join their companies. Salary package was much more you cannot imagine. Even after that, I had an offer of close to 1 crore rupees. But I, I never thought about money. And I tell you, this is the mantra I have, my philosophy that, you know, uh, one should not work for money. One should work what one likes to do. And that is and why what would you do with so much of money? Yeah, that is true. Money you need. I eat simple dal bhat roti sabji and uh, my requirement is very, very limited. So, even if somebody offers you, which has been offered mm -hmm. a crore package a year, then you will do not want to join. It is the scientific problems that excite you more. Exactly. And for them, you have devoted your life. What would be your message to the younger generation? How do you look at science and how do younger generation place itself within the scenario of science? My message to younger generation is you should do what you like to do. That is very, very important. You pick up a subject, pick up a discipline in which you have interest, in which you can excel and do a better job. The other thing is be like Arjuna. This is my motto, mantra, that one should be really focused. If you are not focused, you cannot achieve your goal. And as I said, one sh should never aspire to earn more money. One should try to go for a job or subject or anything what you like to do rather than going for a bigger package. That is very, very important. That's a very nice message to the younger generation because uh, if you look at people who have earned huge amount of money are not remembered. Yes. But those who have contributed significantly to science, mm -hmm. even if they have contributed not very significantly but mm -hmm have made incremental change in scientific knowledge, they are remembered even today. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Singh. It was an honor to have you here. Same here. We'll come back with another as fascinating a personality as Dr. Singh is. Keep watching Eureka every week. <laughs>